Hey everyone, in this video we're going to make a basic Photoshop brush to act as dragon scales. So the first thing I'm going to do in Photoshop is create a new layer in the bottom right corner just so that I'm not working on my background layer. I'm going to select any brush that I use to draw with. I'm going to draw mine in black. I'm going to draw something that looks like a scale I'm happy to use on my dragon. So I'm deliberately keeping it quite wavy and it's not a very smooth or rounded. Now you don't have to do it like that. I might actually draw a few here just to see which one I prefer the look of. Although we don't want it to be perfectly circular, we also don't want it to be too stretched out in one direction because we want them to almost fit into each other. I actually quite like this one up here but again it isn't going to fit into itself overly well so I might neaten the edge off just a little bit. So it's still very imperfect and that's absolutely okay, that's what we want. And for me a generic dragon scale would have almost like a point on it here and then it would be shaded, if I say a very basic cell shading, it would be shaded on this half. So the light is here, the shading is here. So you can do this however you want but I'm going to use my lasso tool which you can get to by pressing L I believe or it's in the top left corner as well. I'm going to select the area I want shadowed. For this effect let's try a soft brush with pressure sensitivity on because I've got black selected and I'm just going to paint a little bit of black on there like that. So Control and D will deselect that. So that is my dragon scale. So once I'm happy with that I'm going to come up here into the top left corner and I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to select the scale that I've just made because I want this to be my brush. So I'm just dragging that over it. And then in the top left corner, we're going to click edit. I'm going to come down to define brush preset. Once you click that, it gives you the option to rename it. So let's call it dragon scale. Although we are going to adjust the settings anyway. So this bit isn't too important. Control and D or unselect again. Press B to get to your brush. Or oh, there is an icon over here as well. Once you're on your brush, right click and come down to the very bottom. Just because this is your most recently saved brushes. So the very last one on here is the one that we've just saved. And you can see now if I click. Sorry, I've got opacity turned on. Let me switch that off. So you can see now if I click, we are left with that brush. Now straight away, you can use this by just clicking wherever you want it to be. You could resize it how you want as well. Fill in any gaps. And this is the main basis of our brush. But I just want to adjust some settings so that we don't have to dot them in. So we're going to come to our brush settings over here. If you don't have this setting, you can come up to window and tick the brush setting. So this bottom preview is what our brush looks like if we hold and drag it down. So you can see why that doesn't work. So what we need to do is we just need to add in some spacing. So this is me not bringing the pencil off the page. So it works quite well, but obviously some directions, if I go straight up, that's not too bad to the right. If you come in circles, you might get some overlaps. It's not a perfect brush, but you can always add a little bit more space into it if you want. I think I like mine so that there isn't too much of a space in there. So for me, that's somewhere between sort of 100 and 110, but this will vary for everyone, depending on your drawing. In terms of any other settings we want on, I'm going to come down to Shape Dynamics. I currently have Angle Jitter set to Direction. What this does is as you draw onto your page, it would change the scale to face the direction you're drawing in. Normally I have this on with some of my custom brushes, but because we put that darker shadow on one half, the shadow wouldn't make sense if you draw it in various directions like this. So for me, I'm going to make sure that's turned off. It's probably already off by default for you. And the only one I want on is my size jitter. So I'm using a pen and tablet. So I'm going to switch this to pen pressure. You can see in the preview what that's done. It means that if I press gently, I can draw smaller ones. I'm just slowly increasing the pressure. And as I increase it, they get larger. So this can give you some pretty cool effects. This is the one that I like to have turned on. You could probably create like Onyx off Pokemon or something like this. Um, but you can see how it's not completely perfect. There are some overlaps. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this one. I find that if I try to press too hard straight away, 
I end up with one overlap at the beginning. But if you're starting quite gentle and then slowly putting pressure down, you can get this pretty cool effect. You could also play around with this size jitter if you want them to be a little bit more random. This is kind of cool, but again, it's going to cause a bit of overlap for us. So what I am going to do that I'm going to change this minimum diameter. I'm going to put mine about 40. So that means even if I press very gently, this is the smallest I can get. So depending on what I'm drawing, I might not want it to go too small. If you want to be able to go even smaller, you would just turn it back down or drag it to the left. You can see the difference there between that and that. And of course, you can still press on the page a single time, which is actually quite an effective way of doing it. But to save time, most of us would want to be able to just draw these in like so. So the way I would do it is just like this. I'd probably draw in some larger scales, depending on my dragon. And then I would maybe come in and fill in the larger gaps with various sizes. And this is where your smaller scales come quite handy. Now I'm only doing this quite quickly. If you were doing quite a sort of finished rendered illustration, you would probably have to spend a little bit more time with this, get a little bit neater, make sure the scales are the right size for how you want them to look. But for sketching and things like that, this can really speed up your workflow. For those of you that are struggling to get the settings right, I am going to make this brush downloadable on my Gumroad as well. But obviously this tutorial is free for those that do want to make it themselves. And because of the shading we've got on here, it does mean I've already put in the light source in the top left corner for us, but it also means regardless of where we draw these scales, the lighting is already on them and already right. And of course, this is just a basic example. When you make your initial brush scale, make it how you want it to look. You might not want any lighting in there. And I almost forgot once we've got the brush how we want it to look, we're gonna to come to this button here and we're going to create a new brush by clicking on that. So I'll call it Dragon Scale Brush. So if you right click now, it's the last brush on there. The one before that is just the one we used as a preset, so you could probably remove that now. And I'll just show you another one that I've created. It's almost identical, but instead of using a soft round brush for the shading, I just drew it in. Let me turn this brush up a little bit. So it's more sketchy, but I quite like a sketching style. If I draw a large one, sorry, I'm running out of space. It's actually very messy, but when you combine lots of them together, it kind of looks pretty cool. And it also looks like the rocks from Pokemon games, the old Game Boy Pokemon games from above. So yeah, you can use this method in any way you want. Hopefully it gave you some idea how you can create something quite basic and variations of it to fill in the scales of your dragon. So very quickly what I'm going to do is just show you how you can use a bit of colour to that as well. So let's go with green, classic green dragon. And in fact I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. So let's say this is your dragon's neck for example or its body and you've coloured that with a base layer of green. Let's use the brush we've just created. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to keep black selected for this, but you could use just a darker green. Again, sorry, I'm not going overly neat, because I'm not spending too much time on this. I don't want this video to be any longer than it already is. But you can see how you can fill in quite large areas very quickly. It's pretty good, and it can save you a lot of time. And then you could always go in underneath that layer with whatever brush you normally use. Let's say a soft round one, for example and just add in some highlights, especially on the larger scales. So I'm just using this on the lighter half, the one that doesn't have shading on. If you didn't want your shading to be black because you don't generally shade with black, you could have just selected a different color when placing these scales on. And you can see I've left plenty of gaps as well, haven't gone around it all very well. So spend a little bit longer than me. And one more final tip, because we have drawn these on their own layer, I could select that layer, we could double click here within that layer, and it brings us up some editing options. Now I haven't tested this, but it would be quite easy to add a little bit of drop shadow to each scale. So you pick the direction, it's already added some as it is, and then I'm just going to play around with these settings just a little bit to up the spread. 
and the distance, the size. Again, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm going to change the color to be a bluey green, a darker bluey green. There's actually loads of settings in here, so you could come to like bevel and emboss and stuff. I admittedly don't use these settings very often, so I don't really know the best way of using them. But you might be able to add a little bit of highlight to them. I might be on the wrong side there. But yeah, I'm not using them now, but I'm just giving you an example of what you can do. And you can always turn those effects off there if you prefer it without. It's just added another depth of shading. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful. As mentioned, I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can purchase this on my Gumroad. I'll use this one that I've just made now and also I'll add the one that I've made that's a bit sketchier as well because I quite like that one. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Let me know what other brushes you guys want to see. And as always, make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up button for more content. Thanks for watching everyone.